everybody, and welcome to From My Mother's Basement, the show that celebrates being a geek. I'm Jason. And I am Michael. And I hope all of you had a enjoyable and safe and hopefully somewhat crazy Halloween. Halloween, Samhain, Dio de la Muerte, yes. All Hallows Eve, all those fun things. I hope you enjoyed them all. Yes, a lot of stuff happened. And if you got to go see Danny Elfman at the the music of Danny Elfman thing at Nokia Theater, mm. I know that the thing is, though, I was tempted to go see um, that concert because they announced uh, for November 2nd, what, tonight, they're doing it at the Honda Center in Anaheim. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's like half the price. Seriously? And yeah. Elfman's going to be at that one, too? Yep. Ah, oh, frack berries. Yeah, I know, I know. It, it was... Uh... I would so go to that. Yes, me, me too. But we like, have the show's shows. over. I'm hopping in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, what'd you do for Halloween? Did you dress up at all or anything? Day, or? Halloween proper, rather. Mm-hmm. Um, we have friends in from out of town. You'll notice Shadar's not in the chat room. That's because her and her husband are out here visiting. Mm-hmm. Um, so we all went to... Uh, we basically had Guild Night minus Jason because he had other plans. Well, you know. We had Guild Night... At, at, at what turned into Guild Night at Disneyland for Halloween. Um, we did the, can- the, 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 the Halloween candy runs and stuff. And it, had ne- it was uh, Shadar and her husband's first time to the mouse. They'd never been before. Yeah. So interesting. We, we had a good time. Uh, we did a lot of that. Um, Nikki's costume got a lot of comments because we, because uh, uh, between the ears and the way we put it all together, it went really well. Well, she did so much work on that. I mean, the both of you have done so much work on her outfit. Well, we didn't do the Black Mage this time. Mm. Black Mage is still still in process because ah, okay. we encountered a couple snags. So what we did is, uh, what would happen if uh, in the re- the Wolf in Red Riding Hood if uh-huh. the Wolf won? <laughs> so she's got the, you know the basic outfit, and we made her a caplet, and we got those Neko Mimi ears mm-hmm. and reskinned them. Nice. So I took I took the you know I took the ears apart and got myself a pattern, and Yoshiki was where was that at? Yoshiki was at uh, Komikaze. Then you, okay. Then, you, oh, then today was better than yesterday because yesterday sucked at Kamikaze. But we'll get to mm. that. Yeah. Um, but the uh, so we we did that. So she had the Wolf Ears movie, and it was really funny knowing people who don't know about the Neko Mimi ears because we'd be in line for a ride. Mm-hmm. And for example, Space Mountain, we were in line for excuse me, Ghost Galaxy. Oh yeah, we were in line for that, and people are watching. They're checking. They're like, oh hey, that's kind of cute concept. And then the ears move. And they're like, wait a minute, what? And he just do the you know, and 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 this one guy's like, <laughs> <laughs> we had like a couple of people were like, what the fuck? And they were just like you know doing the little movie thing, moving thing, and right, it was it was pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what we did for that. And uh, while we were there, I got to see the uh, the tree, the the extended tree preview for. Uh, Big Hero 6. Nice. What did you think of it? I agree with your statement from last week that done properly with the right source material, the concept of the 4D theater can work. Mm. Leave it to Disney to get it right. <clears throat> true. Very true. Um, and it worked. It worked really well. Uh, visually, the movie's stunning, but I expected it to be. Um, their lighting is they've come a long way that that particular branch of the CG house mm-hmm. has come a long way from Wreck-It Ralph. I mean, Wreck-It Ralph looked good. It looked very good. But um, the lighting in this, the lighting is... in Wreck-It Ralph, the um, the ray tracing for, you know, the light bouncing everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. If I remember correctly, the tech they had at that time could only do one source of light at a time. I doubt stuff that like, highly because Pixar has been doing multiple sources of for light stuff. forever. For this one, uh, for um, Big Hero Six, they bumped that up to ten simultaneously. At each pass, you mean? At each pass. Okay. So instead of doing well, like a hundred <clears throat> passes of one thing, they only had to do like ten. Right, right. Which is cool. I mean, the whole thing is it's it's like I said, the visuals were nice, the water was nice, the hair was nice, but everybody can do nice hair. What actually impressed me the most out of it was Baymax. Specifically, the translucency of the, of of his of his of the skin mm-hmm. on him, and the fact that it's obviously air filled, so the collision detect, yeah. and when it deflates, you know, just a <laughs> yes. Um, I mean that scene's hilarious. 
but looking at it from a geek point of view, oh my god, the simulation <laughs> that must have gone into that. Oh yes, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. it's incredible work. Um, I think I know who the bad guy is. I, I'm wondering if they're going to go down that obvious comic book route. Yeah. Um, I I'm kind of leaning towards Gogo as my favorite, although why she has to be yellow is beyond me. Yeah. Um. <laughs> The thing with wasabi. I spill wasabi on my pants one damn time. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, so I am looking forward to seeing the movie a lot. I am too. And I am jealous of uh, some of our um, our yeah, viewers who were able to go to a um, special advanced uh, free screening of it if you were an annual pass holder. And unfortunately, when the word got out, I was a little too late and it was already filled up and whatnot. So... And I do have to say, though, they had some extra goodies there that was up. Now, were they selling these? or were I'm they not sure if they away? were. Nice record lesson that let us know in the chat if they were giving these away. Because if they were, or if they bought it. But even still, um, they actually created a pop vinyl of Baymax. That's cute. That's actually really cool. I, I kind of. That's. Want... It looks kind of like Eve almost. Kind of, yeah. Um, and that's one I would love to see a, a pop vinyl of if it's not made already. Of Eva? Uh, uh, of Eve and, and Wally. Well, there is a Wally one. Is there a Wally one? Wally does exist. I'm not sure if there's one for Eve. Uh, okay. Oh, My nice star, it was for free. <laughs> Dang. And Must stay for the ending credits, of course. Of course. Which makes me wonder how that's going to work out, because they've already confirmed it's not part of the the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But it could well, no. still be something fun, though. Like at the end well, of the, the first Avengers? Yeah. Well, it could be. I mean... It's CG, so it could be part of the Marvel CGU. Um, <laughs> true, very but true. But it's also, you know, San Francisco. I mean, I just want to check out like how they designed that in a, in the movie. The whole world building aspect of it, dude. Me. The whole, well, yeah, there's that. But the whole, the idea of the Golden Gate Bridge with the the oh, with the T. I can't remember the damn. <laughs> the arches, like yes, the, the Japanese know, architecture arches exactly on what them. Talk about yes. Uh, I forget what, the, what they're called again. Um, but, I mean, that was just... I'm watching that going, wow, that's kind of trippy and awesome and... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and all the lo all the mascots and stuff. I mean, I am, I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing it. Nice. Very nice. I suspect the story is not going to be nearly as retarded as the comic was, because let's be honest, the comic was freaking retarded. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. Um, but back uh, backpedaling a little bit. Um, so... So what did you do on Halloween Day? Well, I had an idea for, you know, an outfit, and here's an idea of a prop that I bought for it. I was I was going to be Matt Smith. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find the jacket for it. Then I thought it was going to be the silence. Uh, not, the si uh, not the silence. I was going to be an ood. Mm -hmm. And I actually bought the materials to start making the little orb and whatnot. But uh, that part that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Right. So uh, then I was going to be the silence, and then uh, that fell through. So I, last second, I was just like, I need to put on something, and it took me like less than five minutes to put it together. Here's a picture of my girlfriend Jess and I. We went out to dinner with some friends. Uh, she was Tenet, uh, the tenth Doctor, and I turned out to be Jake from State Farm. <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I had my old headset I had from my from my former job. I put that on. Um, found a red shirt. We made a name tag while we were sitting there in the restaurant, and it was a big hit. Nice. I was just thinking something completely quick and random. So, but um, did you see? Did you happen to? Did you happen to catch the Halloween episode of At Midnight or the Thursday night episode? It is recorded. I have yet to watch it. They're all in costume, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it was um. The, the, the guests, it was Aisha Tyler and two other guys, Steve Ag and another guy whose name I can't remember. Okay. But they're all in costume. So uh, Chris Hardwick was uh, in a in like obvious Jedi outfit, right? Mm -hmm. With a badge and a black hat or and a, and a, and a, and a hat. I'm like going, what is this? Some sort of walking dead Skywalker of the dead? What? What's going on here? I didn't get it. It finally steps out. It's it's Luke Skywalker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I need to watch it. Like I said, I have it recorded. 
It was pretty funny. But and Aisha uh, Tyler kicked ass as she always does. But hmm. so, so you were Jake from State Farm. I was Jake from State Farm. We just hung out a bit and whatnot. We didn't too, didn't do too much on Halloween for the sole fact that we were heading up to your area in the Santa Barbara area to go check out a Day of the Dead festival and concert. And um, how was that? Absolute blast. I um we unfortunately I was a moron and didn't consider that the place had a 10 p.m. sound uh, sound curfew because I'm always expecting hey main events you know for concerts one night they don't show up till 10 o'clock so we'll show up like at seven and then I realized they <laughs> yeah <laughs> but thankfully we did get there so I actually um, was able to catch uh, Ozo Motley which is one, the band I was there for and then we stayed a little bit to check out the the headliner with some big huge band I like ca- uh, Cafe Takuba or Takuba Cafe I can't remember how they how they said it but it's okay. some huge band in Mexico and whatnot. So, okay. um, but there was a lot of um, great outfits there. Um, they had all these little shrines that we saw when we wa- as we were walking up. It was mm-hmm. very cool. Um, well worth the money in the Santa trip. Barbara Bowl is a nice facility. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, like I was saying earlier, I, I lived. I used to live four blocks from it. So every now and then I I get to hear little bits of the concerts as they go on. But and and I got to see Duran Duran there, and it was nice. a great. It was a great venue. Um, for it's a it's nice, comfortable amphitheater. Mm-hmm. There really is no bad seat in that place. There really isn't, though. I made sure to get tickets right by the sound booth. So <laughs> smart man, <laughs> smart man. I was like, being someone who's worked on that for years, like yourself, and you've done it much longer than I have. You know, that's like that's the key place. That's to be. the sweet spot for <laughs> exactly. your sound. Exactly. Yeah, that is totally the sweet spot. I whenever I order tickets, if there's if there's any way, I'm willing to pay an additional up to an additional 20 30 bucks a ticket to mm-hmm. get tickets by the soundboard. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they had tickets all the way at the very top for I think like half of what I paid, but I was like, mm-hmm. no. Nah. <laughs> no, I'll, yeah, I'll I, pay I, the I, extra I, to get to get the nice seats. When I went and saw Duran Duran, that's what I did too. I mean, I was literally right sitting dead center in front of the soundboard when I went and saw Duran Duran there. So nice. was, very was, very nice. Sound was pristine. So what about you though? You went to Kamikaze this year, right? Yeah. Uh, was it really that yeah. bad? Uh, or was it like a fall from grace? Or it was, uh, It's a fall from grace. I mean, Kamikaze, for those who don't know, uh, it's it's it says Stan Lee's Kamikaze, and Elvira's on, uh, Cassandra Peterson's on the board for it, but they don't really run it. <laughs> it's run by this other chick uh. um, who is trying to be the CEO of Expo with boobs. In a bad way. Mm. Um, she's not as bad as him, though. But the um, last year, it was pretty good. I mean, I, I actually enjoyed myself, and there was a lot of stuff I wanted to see. You know, I got to meet Fawn Davis, and I got to talk to the guys at, at Stan Winston and the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to see, I got to meet, uh, chat with Weird Al, and or I didn't get to chat with him, but I mean, I, I got stuff from him, and I got to chat with uh, Edward James Olmos. Nice. And that was all really cool. This year, I got another pic. I got another picture from. Uh, now let me grab it real quick. <sighs> ah, fuck, never mind. I got another <laughs> Julie. I got another uh, Julie Newmar picture autographed, and actually got to talk to her this time. Oh, sweet! So that was sweet. Um, but I was looking around. I mean, I walked the. Uh, the original intention was not to walk the floor because we were all still wiped from being at Disneyland the night before. Hmm. You know, our Fitbits registered over fifteen thousand steps. And we did like eight miles at Disneyland that <laughs> night because um, we were all over the damn place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so we're all wiped and tired when we go there. And we were, we were just going to, you know, walk in, hit a few key points, stick around for the human Tetris thing, which, which Jen participated in, hmm. and, and leave. Um, maybe we would decide from there. And then, but I ended up walking the entire floor looking for Stan Winston Studios. They weren't there this year. Hmm. They were gone. Fawn Davis was there, sort of. Um, but but Stan Winston Studio was gone. A lot of the other special effects groups that were there the year before were gone. Um, and this is what the third year of Kamikaze. Fourth or? year. Fourth year. Sorry. Fourth year Kamikaze. The got a, got to see Elvira. That was cool. But. Nice. Um, the uh, EpicCosplay.com, which, you know, does wigs and other bits for cosplay. And they're everywhere. They're at every con. They're con whores. Mm-hmm. They weren't there. 
Jeez. they were there last year. Huh. So it's like, that's not really a good sign. Yeah, when these major, you know, I don't know about major, but easily identifiable players are not there. Let's put it this way. They used all of South Hall, um, as, or they had all of South Hall, mm-hmm. but their main center section was like 40 feet wide of virtually nothing leading up to the main stage. And then they had the boost to the other side. But the, but the boost, there were only like two center sec, two two center walks, mm-hmm. and it was like uh, thirty feet, fifteen feet, thirty feet, fifteen feet, thirty feet Ugh. wall. They did not use opt- make optimum use of space. Damn. Um, that being said, there was some really cool cosplay. Um, from a cosplay point of view, uh, there was some really cool stuff. Nice. You had your usual, oh, I'm sexy, slutty Pikachu. Yeah, that's nice. Have a good time. <laughs> but there was some incredible pieces of work there. Um, there was this one cosplay group. Um, I forget their name off the top of my head. That had life-size, dimensionally accurate Pokemon. Like, they took them from, from the cartoons and the games, mm-hmm. scaled them accordingly, and this group had made their Pokemon into rod puppets. So not a costume per se, but a fully articulated no, puppet. They were all, they were all generic trainers. They were in generic trainer uniforms. That's amazing. <laughs> and um they had like uh the 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 pink bulldog, whatever that one is. Mhm. They had that one, they had a Rattata. Uh what are the other ones? Um what's the 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 the, the fish one with the big thing on it? The one that everybody everybody does. The, the, for a long time was everybody uh so i understand you like mudkips mudkips yes yeah they had so they had mudkip um and they literally turned them into yeah they were they were the breeder trainers mercutio okay. they uh they actually turned them into puppets functional like the the bulldog when they they just walked it like and it looked like it was walking and they could tur- they had it uh, they had the they had little string triggers in it so where they could the heads turned how um, long would the, it take to... The Rattata was turning its head and looking around. I mean... That's insane. I mean, how long qual- would it take to pictures, create can, these I, I've got pictures on my phone I could show you. Uh, we'll, we'll show them next week if you guys want to okay. see them. Incredibly well done. I asked him how long it made, how long it took. You know, I, I walked up to one of them, you know, how long... Or I asked him, I said, how long did it take you guys to make these guys? And they're like, it took us uh, four to six weeks each to, to, to catch and train them. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you're, you're playing the character. character. You get points nice. for that. You get serious points for that. Very nice. Um, it gave us, it gave me some ideas for next year. Cool. Um, and then the, but by far the, the, the most, oh, there was a guy who was, uh, oh God, what is his name? The Batman character that's got the, that's, uh, it's, it's the puppet. Or the, the ventriloquist dummies, the va- the actual oh, villain. Yeah, I know who, what you were talking about. The one um, with the little Tommy gun and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a guy done up as that. He had the puppet and he had the a, a, a headpiece, mm-hmm. and he looked like he just walked out of the cartoon. Nice. He looked phenomenal. The funniest crossover costume I saw mm-hmm. was a guy in full Raccoon City tack gear mm-hmm. with a Team Rocket logo and Pokeballs in his webbing. <laughs> So he was he was Team Rocket City Raccoon, a Rocket Raccoon City. <laughs> I'll give props for that. That's yeah. <laughs> I saw that. Nikki and I saw that. We're just like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I was another, uh, there was another dude who was who was dressed up as Psy, so he's doing the Gundam style dance all over the place. <laughs> Did he have pistachios with him? Uh, he didn't have pistachios, Aww. but he was doing the dance pretty good. I nice. mean, I, I'll give the boy credit. He was he, doing the, the skip and the, the pony skip and the whole nine yards. <laughs> but aside from that, and, and Nick was there in his variant in his uh, King Varian Rin outfit with mm. the uh, with the person he uh, the girl he runs with who usually run, uh, dresses as uh, as Anduin. Mm-hmm. So that group was there. For cosplayers, it was great. For everything else, for actual show. I, maybe I'm biased because we've been doing these for so damn long. I wasn't impressed. Would, I don't know that I'll go last yeah. year. I don't think I'll go next year. You don't think so? Jeez. I mean, if somebody gives me tickets, I won't say no, but I'm not going to go out of my way to buy them. To buy them. Okay. Well, that's sad to hear. Yeah, it was. Oh, well. Maybe they'll they'll turn things around but those next co- year. But those Pokemon, oh my god, they were awesome. So you have to share those pictures. That'd be amazing. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, should we get to the, the, the news that 
had people foaming at the mouth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the past yeah, week. I had a lot of people foaming. Okay, now in our weekly, this is not sponsored by Disney <laughs> segment. <laughs> I should make up the lower third. We that. should do that. <laughs> this segment not sponsored by Disney as we talk about everything Marvel. <laughs> 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 Uh, Marvel Studios hosted a live um, event, I guess press screening, press event, whatever you want to call it, uh, at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood, which obviously is owned by Disney. Um, they actually, I believe the upper levels of the El Capitan Theater were open to um, the public. If they showed which up is in almost, time. almost never happens. Um, I actually knew someone who went there and they got online at 4.30 in the morning for it. Wow. Um, it didn't start until like 11, 11.30. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, and basically, people are wondering: Is this a secret, you know, screening of something coming up or something like that? No, it wasn't even that. Uh, Kevin, I think it's Feggy. I, can't, I always called it Fage. It's Feggy, I think it is. Yeah, Feggy. Um, Marvel Studios president um, showed up. Uh, said he wanted to start something that you've already seen, thanks to the fine people at Hydra, and uh, showed the uh, the trailer for. Uh, thanks Avengers to the 8. fine people at Hydra. Yes, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, go Sorry. through a little bit about that, and then he basically says he wasn't there to tell people things they already knew, and this was basically at that point was everything Phase Three. It was wow. yeah, it was a lot to take in. Well, they list. I know they listed the movies. Yes, and the order. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll just go through them real quick. Uh, starting November fourth, twenty sixteen, is actually going to be. That's Doctor the official Strange. start of Phase 3, right? Yes, that's the official start of Phase 3, because Ant-Man is set for July 17th in 2015, but that's technically Phase 2. Okay. So, it's um, the tail end of Phase 2. Yes. Well, there's one scheduled just before this. I, I'm mistaken. Um, it was actually um, Captain America, which at the beginning they said it was Captain America's Serpent Society, which was scheduled for May 6th. And then they came out the end as, oh, by the way, it's actually going to be Civil War. To which the place just erupted. Right, the place just blew the hell up. Um, they confirmed that um, Robert Downey Jr. will be showing up. It was signed on for it. He actually showed up on stage um, with Chris Evans there. Um, nice. They also showed up with a third person. Um, the actor's name is Chadwick Boseman. And along with this announcement, they announced Black Panther. Yes. This is what I was waiting for. I'm looking forward to this. Some kind of bad. I mean, ever since they started talking a little more about Ultron, and of course Ultron covers himself in vibra- vibranium, which only comes from very few places around the world. Including this fictional little country. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, oh, it was so good. Um, to, t- to share with this, they actually gave a first look at T'Challa's um, design for the Marvel character. Marvel Universe, and I do have to say, I kind of it's very close to the uh, the comic version. I mean, there yes. there are some modern twists to it here and there, but overall, a plus. I, I'm I'm all for this. I agree. Me me too. I I just this it's a character. No one number one. It's one of the original. Uh, you can't say African American because he's African, actually African. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go uh, politically uh, incorrect and say it's one of the few black superheroes. Yeah. That's that's been around, and has some teeth. Uh, have some teeth. Pardon the pun, but actually has some 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 substance. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I remember reading the Black Panther back in the 70s. I just and, want to. And he was way better than Iron Claw. <laughs> Nice. Not that I didn't like Iron Claw, but you know. True. I'm just curious to see how they're going to represent uh, Wakanda um, on screen. That's uh, going to be. Yeah, yeah. That's going to prove interesting. To there, say the there way. are several aspects of it that makes me wonder: Are they going to try to shoot on location somewhere, or they're just going to go straight green screen on it all? Of course, A it's, very it's, good question. Yeah, exactly. Um. Now, I remember with the Age of Ultron trailer, there was that one scene, brief scene, where you saw, um, uh, what's it called, Captain America's shield, which is made out of vibranium, broken in half. Right. And you were telling me that Nikki saw that and went, okay, then Black Panther's on the way, because they have to find another more vibranium somewhere. I was going to say, she called it. (laughs) The thing is, though, the rumor is going on the internet right now, and it kind of, after I look at it a little more, is that... That scene 
is actually a fictional moment. It's a dream sequence. And cause it, cause, are you are you shitting me? No, here's the thing though, it kind of ties into the um, the extra bit that they showed at you know this press event, where it was um, Captain America and Iron and, and Tony Stark uh, outside chopping wood and just talking back and forth, which basically set the um, uh, set the story story arc for Civil War between the two of them. Um, and they okay. basically talked about how everyone got just royally messed up against Ultron, just torn apart, right? Except for for uh, Captain America. And you remember in the scene, there's a brief like half second scene, and I froze it on my TV of um, Captain America seems to be back in like the 20s or 30s in a USO theater, in a there's a dance hall going on. Uh- that was actually from the first movie. It was the 1930s or 40s what, during World War II. What the rumor is right now, and I'm kind of thinking more along about it, is that you saw scenes where, or a scene of Ultron with uh, the brother and sister, uh, Scarlet Witch and, Quis- and Quicksilver. Right. So I'm guessing at that point, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver probably help out Ultron a little bit at one point or another. So here's right. the thing. Scarlet Witch probably invaded the minds of all the Avengers and gave them each, you know, a nightmare or a dream or something like that. Probably their deepest, darkest fears. And so the whole scene with Captain America's shield broken, that's apparently supposed to be Iron Man sit, uh, standing in the middle of an asteroid with everyone around him destroyed, which goes over to Captain America. He's the only one who had a good dream, which actually went back and had that first dance with Agent Carter. It's a rumor. Uh, I think it's a bit of a stretch, but it's okay. A, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm just, again, massive speculation here, because all yeah. we have is the trailer. That's but, interesting. Um, because the whole thing I, with that conversation between Iron Man and, and Captain America is, I don't trust someone who has a dark side. Well, maybe you haven't seen it yet. So. Total side topic. I know we're recording. Oh well, fire yeah. up your aim. I I see it. It's up. Oh, you do. There it yeah. is. Okay, hang on. <laughs> That's I'm just. Sorry, my... you weren't there a second ago. Yeah. That's just my take on it. I I uploaded those pics. Oh, you did. Oh, okay, beautiful. I'll, I'll so we can down. pull them down and show them. Awesome. Um, you're gonna have to rotate them because I didn't. Okay, no worries. Um, we'll do that in, in post then. So, well, moving on. Aside from Doctor Strange, which they have yet to announce who's actually playing the the main role. What's weird Steven is who they're Strange. tossing around with it. Um, oh, that reminds me. I just saw a preview because they were talking about. Uh, some people were talking about them trying to get Joaquin Phoenix and stuff. You're right. I was like, Nah, Joaquin Phoenix can't. The boy is aged hard. <laughs> have you seen the preview for the new movie he's in? No, I have not. He's looking haggard. He's mm. looking like Chris Christopherson haggard. Time has not been well to him, apparently. No. <laughs> and, and of course, now, now that being said, for the role, he's got these you know big ass mutt and ch- mutton chops, and mm-hmm. um, I forget the name of the movie, but oh man, Joaquin Phoenix is not looking good. <sighs> gotcha. That's probably why they didn't go with. But that. I, I also saw a preview for a movie that I do want to check out: the new Johnny Depp movie, Mordecai. I have yet to see it. It looks like part Pink Panther, part Austin Powers. At least that implies that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, Johnny Depp can fully inherit a character, or, or you know, and become the character. Very true. And he does in the commercials or in the, in the previews. I'll so, have to check it out then. Yeah, definitely. T- at least check out the the the, the preview for it. Okay. Uh, but just going back to Stephen Strange, Strange yeah, apparently sorry. the person—no worries—the person that they're talking about right now is Benedict Cumberbatch. Which I mean, you're talking about a guy who can dive into a character. Yeah, but I, I honestly think. Which side note? Um, a few. Days I think ago, Keanu Reeves could do it. <laughs> I could see Keanu doing it. I kind of want to see what Benedict does with it. Because uh, a few days before Halloween, I actually was able to go see in theaters. It was uh, part of the Fathom Events thing. Yes. Of um, Benedict Cumberbatch, um, and I forget the other actor, uh, Johnny something. Um, 
splitting roles or switching roles in uh, Frankenstein. It was a modern take on it or a modern rewrite. But it was it was still yeah modern presentation of it um, at the National Theater in mm-hmm. uh, in London. Holy crap! I I saw the one where uh, Cumberbatch was uh, the monster. Uh huh. <clears throat> oh, absolutely just amazing and this is a record it was a recording of a performance that happened back in 2009 it was re-released in theaters in 2012 and again uh this year and it was only a one night only event and i'm sure they'll do it again in the future even though people time and time again have created petitions saying throw this on dvd and blu-ray it'll sell like hotcakes oh yeah or, or, or make it part of great performances or something exactly and the response every time from the head of uh the theater is we won't do that, not because of money, but because we want to prefer, pre- preserve the experience. And, okay, I can I can go with that. Yeah, you can't really argue that too heavily. Yeah, exactly. But that was absolutely amazing. So seeing him, you know, in talks or rumored to be in talks for played, you know, in Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. I think he could do it. Not oh, I know he has the ability to do mm-hmm. it. I, I don't doubt Cumberbatch's acting ability. Okay. Uh, the, the man, I mean... He has the skills. He has the ability. Mm-hmm. No doubt. I just... I kind of want to see it go to Keanu. <laughs> yeah. I, I because, well, now that he's actually starting to show emotion in his characters. Mm-hmm. You know? It's... Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, it's we have, what, three years before this comes out? So hopefully we'll start getting a trailer maybe in like a couple years. That would be or, nice. So. Or at least something. Yeah, or at least an announcement of who it's going to be. Yeah, it'd be nice to I mean, I, I'm going to go see it regardless. Yeah. I mean, all these movies I'm going to see regardless. Yeah. So you, are, you and Nikki and everyone else is going to do the exact same thing. Um, especially Guardians of the Galaxy 2. God. Yeah. Have they decided what the storyline is on that yet? Not yet. <laughs> but they did I saw that and I laughed when they scribbled it out and oh, changed yeah. it. Well, because they had they they pushed it forward. It's now yeah, it May... was originally supposed to be released in July of seventeen. Right. And and now like, yeah, we're gonna move it forward. I was like, all right, cool, this is the way to do it. I'm I can already imagine that's Rocket actually writing it out and whatnot. <laughs> Sucking all the joy out of life, yeah. And then we have Thor Ragnarok. This one has me curious because the way they're explaining um so far is that this will pick up right after where things were left off in Avengers Age of Ultron. And they're considering this to be a major shift in how in the movie storylines, kind of like how Captain America Win- Winter Soldier changed the course of pretty much everything before. Uh, yeah, before. Well, right. They, they hinted, they, they did loose hinting at it in, in the Hulk movie, mm-hmm. the second Hulk movie. Right. Then there was a, a, a sli- then then you actually got to see Samuel L. Jackson in Iron Man, and then oh god, what was the other lead up? Can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I can't either. But, but I mean, you actually heard the mention of the Avenger Initiative at the end of Iron Man. Exactly. So I'm wondering how Ragnarok, which is such as to be like the end of all days, basically. I want to see how that ties into. Ultron. I'm wondering if that's going to spin everything more towards um, Civil War uh, uh, or Infinity s- Gauntlet. I would say Infinity Gauntlet because let's face it, there are so many aspects of the Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity Stones. I mean, there's so many comic storylines within that that they could possibly well, the, go you through. You got the whole the whole Tesseract and everything else. I mean, it all mm-hmm. ties in so tightly as it is. Exactly. I, I I'm looking forward to it either way. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And. I love the fact that they have these two next movies thrown out there before Avengers Affinity War. And because that can uh, change everything we could possibly think of that could happen in Avengers movie. Uh, First one, Captain Marvel. A lot of people were applauding this because they're going the Carol Danvers route. Sweet. So happy for that one. Yeah. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, hit up a local comic store. Yeah. Trust me, you'll you'll appreciate it. <laughs> That's an in, and and she's an interesting dichotomy too. Mm-hmm. Especially because this has Earthbound origins, but then goes all the way out in outer space, kind of like the same with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So, it, oh, there's also the the, the love. I mean, if the, if they if, depending on how tight they stick with the, if the with Carol Danvers' storyline, mm-hmm. because the current comic 
when she's not in Captain Marvel form, she's a Muslim office worker. <sighs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll have to see. I mean, we have a ways to wait. I mean, 2018, we're four years out. Yeah. Um, the one that excited me the most, aside from Black Panther, Inhumans. I'm curious about this. I cannot Is wait. Is this going to be their way to, to, to defuse the, the mutants on... Uh... It kind of has to be. I read an article where they were talking about uh, Disney trying to sour the pot for Fox to get them to release the mutants. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. wondering if this is part of that. We have four years, so we'll see what happens. I mean, people were saying the same thing when Marvel announced they were canceling the Fantastic Four comics, uh, comic series. Um, people thought it was basically to stop Fox from continuing to make movies or disillusion themselves from thinking they can make a lot of money with a, a Fantastic Four. Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four yeah, but Fantastic Four as a title just wasn't doing well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was uh, it had in, shit Marvel's, writers. in Marvel's own words, it was it was pushing less than thirty thousand issues a month, which Marvel has a history of stuff in that you know that range, killing them off. Right. So. Well, they, and what they got to do is they got to get some good writers in there. They got to get your Scott Labdells or somebody like that in there. Exactly. Uh, but moving on to the, apparently what everyone was really looking forward to, which would be the conclusion of uh, phase three is avengers infinity war and the surprise was actually they're splitting it into two movies say, infinity war part one yeah <laughs> they're going the peter jackson route here yes they are <laughs> but here's the thing though considering all the movies beforehand they're going to be coming out all of the story all the lore all the interconnecting characters to throw that all into just one movie Oh, yeah, no, you, you need at least four you hours. You really can't. So, yeah. um, And they're split into a year apart, part one, May 2018, part two, May 2019. I sense a lot of CG. <laughs> oh, dear God, yeah. I mean... <laughs> That's usually why they do stuff like that, is the effects. Yeah. <laughs> Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Inhumans, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Throw all these people in there. I think I think they've just paid ILM's paychecks for the next <laughs> ten years. <laughs> So it makes me wonder, though, what could we possibly expect from maybe Phase 4? Or is the comic well, genre going to be less popular at that point? I think they're going to probably reassess partway through Phase 3. Okay. Um, I mean, right now, you know, uh, in, uh, Saturday Night Live joked about it, that Marvel can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. But pretty much Marvel can do no wrong at this point as far as the movies go. <laughs> at this point, yeah. Because they've been smart enough to get good writers. Mm-hmm. And good actors and decent directors, which is not to say they haven't had bad directors, but the writing's been better than the directing in a couple of cases. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Hulk, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and they were asked about that in the Q and A session afterwards. Uh, Kevin Feige was asked, "Why no information? Why no word of an independent Hulk movie or independent Black Widow movie?" And his response was, "These characters." tie in so much to so many other characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, that they feel that it's just not right, the right time yet for them to have their own. And I just look at it this way. With Age of Ultron, the trailer, you had you know the Hulkbuster Iron Man armor there. Mm -hmm. You're already putting things into place that you can possibly do World War Hulk. Uh, oh, no. Or Planet Hulk, for that matter. Planet Hulk, maybe. Um, but the thing is... What's we? I mean, I know I'm glad they're splitting the Infinity Wars into two into two films mm -hmm. at least. Yes, that makes sense. What I don't get is Captain America: Civil War. It's the only one that has Civil War in the title. Mm -hmm. The Civil War storyline is so f much grander. And they they mentioned that that this is going to be a, um, almost nothing like. Uh, what the comic was so this is basically well taking... it can't be because I can't use mutants exactly but I mean... <laughs> but at that point though you have something that's spanned an entire year and you're going to throw it, try to shove it down into the concept of a whole a singular movie that's a lot to, to, to trim away yeah yeah well also uh, uh, the other reason I, I suspect they're doing is they're, they're giving these other characters a fair shot Mm -hmm. Because you know they're introducing new characters, introducing Captain Marvel, they're introducing Black Panther. They're going to be in the TV universe, which is related to the cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. 
Um, they're introducing uh, Iron Fist. That's what I meant to say earlier, not Iron Claw, Iron Fist. Uh, they're introducing Iron Fist. They're introducing Daredevil. They're reintroducing Daredevil. Right. Um, there's a third one they're doing. Um, that okay. are going to be on. Net- they're going to be Netflix based. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Come on, chat room, help me. I know, out. we, we, we out talked here. about it before. Yes. Um, but it's it, they're doing three of them through through Netflix. Uh, Daredevil, Iron Fist, and another one. Four. There's four of them. The Netflix deals for four different characters. Okay, so but they're introducing them as their own independent series. Yes. So they're they're not doing a Hulk movie, especially as historically weak as Hulk performed in the box office. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really surprise me. Giving Black Widow her own title, yeah, her current comic story, her comic storyline is doing good. She doesn't really warrant her own series yet. Besides, she, really she just did Lucy. Yeah, you know. Um, it. But what about this other spinoff movie um, that was talked about? Um, it's not Disney Marvel movie, but Fox Marvel movie. Yeah, and I'm I'm really. Uh, I'm, I'm... <laughs> As your good personal friend, you need a new catchphrase. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> well played. I I. I... I read some new some stuff since then that makes me a little more comfortable with the idea, but okay. yeah, I, go ahead. You're no talking, worries. of course, about we were just talking Gambit. about Gambit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Wolverine ones did fairly well. They've already announced the the long-awaited Deadpool movie that's in the works now. Finally. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I, I'm the fact that they the rumors were true that. Channing Tatum is lined up to play the character. That's the part I'm, I mean, I'm a little more, now that I know he's from Alabama natively, uh-huh. he can at least do close to the accent. But right. but the problem is Remy doesn't have an Alabama accent. He doesn't have a Louisiana accent. He has a French Quarter accent. Exactly. <laughs> Plus, I mean, here's the thing, though. The person that they brought in to, to write the screenplays, and that man named Joshua Z- uh, Zedimer. Mm-hmm. His first m- major movie deal or m- movie screenplay was for the RoboCop reboot, which, for mm. what it was, wasn't that bad. Mm. No, it's not going to win an Oscar. Yeah. But from what I understand, the storyline in that one wasn't that bad. Mm-hmm. So I'm uh... I'm more comfortable with that than if they had given it to somebody like say Uwe Boll. Or he will never get another movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you just throw up a little bit there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. <sighs> or 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 but there have been other writers they've given some of these movies to that have just completely you know, who have no decent writing history. Yeah. Though, you know, some people who are like, yo, does Chen can Chenny Tatum act? Well, you can see that for yourself in his next movie, which is Magic Mike XXL. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. They're, they're releasing that before Jupiter Rising? Comes out summer 2015. You can see his schlong before you see his guy liner. <laughs> Why not? And then see him try and to And meanwhile, for... Marky Mark's going, I did it first, yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's yeah. the movie that made Wahlberg. Yes, yes. Boogie Nights made Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that was a great movie, so we'll, we'll see who else gets a, a spinoff in the, the upcoming, uh, I'd like years. to see, yeah. Cause there's a lot of stuff. And what's weird is they're, in my opinion, they're being smart about it. Unlike what WB is doing. I love me some Warner brothers. Mm-hmm. I love me some DC. But what the frack are you people thinking? Mm-hmm. That being said, I actually kind of like Gotham. But not as a Batman story. Yeah, it, it's a good cop drama. It's a it's a good kind of over the top cop. Luke Cage, thank you. Um, it's a good over the top with some esoteric tidbits cop story. Because I actually find myself really liking Jada Pinkett's character. Mm-hmm. Fish, Fish Mooney? Mooney's pretty freaking call. Pretty freaking cool. Um. 
That's right. You're a star. You're a big, big star. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, do you remember the? I'm sorry. Backtracking to Boogie Nights. Do you remember when they did the uh, the MTV Movie Awards that that year and the penis got an award? Mm-hmm. The fake, the stunt penis got an award. Yep. That was. And they actually brought it on stage <laughs> and it accepted the award. Yeah. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, back to uh. I don't, what what Warner Brothers is doing with their titles, Arrow is good. It's a good story. It's it, the way they're doing it. It's well written. Mm-hmm. It's a good story in and of its own right. It's looking like Flash is going to be much the same. But if you're expecting the comic, forget it. Mm-mm. Then they turn around and did this Gotham crap. <laughs> oh my God. Again, Good story though, but just pull, yeah, ditch Selena Kyle because she doesn't do anything but pose anyway. But pose, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm view honestly what I'm viewing it is the coming up of is, is the is the rise to power of Penguin, and the mm-hmm. director or the the executive producer has pretty much said that's what most of season two is going to be. Is the rise of Penguin, which mm-hmm. they're doing it that aspect of the storyline they're doing really well. I'm very impressed with that portion of it. I hate the Bruce Wayne portions. I mean, for Christ's sake, they introduced Venom already. Or excuse I mean, me, Viper. How the first part. early on did they have to put all these people? Because Batman's still a freaking kid. He didn't, you know. Interact- well, they didn't. They didn't introduce Bane. They just introduced the Viper, Viper which yeah. led to Venom, which was made by Zen Corp, which was owned by, or not Zen Corp. I forget what they're called. Um, which is owned by Wayne Enterprises, and apparently the CEO Chicky is, or the head of PR Chicky knows, uh, blah blah blah. What? Yeah, I'm I'm a couple episodes behind. And then their movie, but but Warner Brothers has said flat out, TV is not related to movie, it is not related to comic, and it is <laughs> not related to cartoon. They're all independent universes, and there's where they're gonna fail. I, in my mind, that's how they're gonna fail. The yeah. whole interconnected, you know, universes thing, I think, has its own detriments, you know, mm-hmm. its own flaws. But I think the the pros outweigh the cons substantially. In, in terms, the way they're doing it, or yeah. Marvel, uh, DC, versus uh, with, Who, pros outweigh the cons. Where I like how how Marvel's doing the whole. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That they're tying that they're t- that they're tying video and film together. Mm-hmm. I like. Now, one thing WB is doing right is Constantine. Yes. And yes, that I, one they got right. And I watched the first episode. Oh my god. Was I right? You were you were right. <laughs> oh, you were so right. It was awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, but yeah, DC, I think DC's gonna learn the hard way that splitting the comics, the T V series, and the movies into their own separate universes. Separate, separate re- revenue streams, cha-ching. Well, separate, I mean, but here's the thing, though. You may get that first hit going, you know, going up when things come up, and then you're just going to go all the way down, and you're going to realize by split, by diversifying this much. Yeah, you're spreading yourselves way too thin. Your ROI, your return on investment is going to be substantially smaller than you were expecting. Yeah. Though I have to admit, one thing that Warner Brothers is doing right is their animation division. Okay, yes. I mean, their feature animation, and I've I've met the head of feature animation. He's actually a really cool guy. Nice. He, um, their 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 feature animation department is getting it. They're they're doing it right mm-hmm. with you know Attack on Gotham, Son of Batman, Dark Knight. Yes. You know, All they're the taking Justice the League sub movies. stories. Yeah. And and making these. I'd love to see an animated version of Killing Joke. I would not be surprised um if it's already in the works. Or Court of Owls. Ooh, Court of Owls yeah. would be a especially if they do some, if they do some of the more um bizarre artwork that's in that. Mhm. They're already working on a Sandman movie. Yes. I'm, I'm, oh God, there, there are a I'm lot of things. I'm mixed on that. I want to see how they're going with it, but. They need to provide something, some behind the scenes footage or a teaser trailer. Or at least or some something. concept art. Yeah, that'd be nice. You know, looking at the comic doesn't count. 
<laughs> no, it doesn't. And don't. I mean, uh, but if they keep Gaiman's writing ability, oh man. Yes. Yes. The potential so. there is insane. But that's but that's one feather out of the Warner Brothers cap that they're getting definitely getting right. Mm-hmm. Compared to their other everything, everything they else? got so many other misses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, l- let's get away from the comic movies real, um, before we okay. wrap things up with a, uh, I guess you can call it a smaller, not quite indie movie that'll be coming out in 2015 called Ex Machina. <laughs> um, this one. I, it's the you you wouldn't dig this up after I dug up Automata just to mess with me, didn't you? Actually, it just popped up in my feed literally the next day, and I went. <laughs> I showed you Automata, and this popped up, and then this popped up. I'm like, really, <laughs> really? Is this gonna be the new thing now? Okay. Be one, what's coming up next week so I can throw it back at you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, this one is uh, written directed by a man named uh, Alex Garland. He worked. He was the screenwriter for uh, Twenty Eight Days Later, which I absolutely loved. Right, um, which Sunshine, got a, lot of, a lot of good review. Yes, uh, Sunshine, not so much, but most importantly, Dread. Yes. So um, the also stars um, two guys are going to be in the upcoming Star Wars Episode Seven, uh-huh. um, and without you know what, instead of talking about, let me just go ahead and show this because this trailer is kind of a mind frag. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. What do you think, Michael? I think that there's uh, going to be a um, M. Night Shyamalan level what a twist in there somewhere. Right. Um. What I'm curious about, honestly, is is the guy that they're talk that that, that that is the human part of the Turing test. Uh huh. Is he actually the subject of the test? Yeah, uh, the thought did cross my mind, but but. Uh, I I I want to see it. Um, it's definitely going to be a, a mind warp. I mean, if anything, for the CG aspect. Oh of yeah, it. I mean, what they did. Oh, I'm. I, I'm really curious to see how they got the ins and outs of how they created this character. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but even so, even aside of that point, the I mean, this whole interacting with AIs and what does it mean to be human and whatnot, all this existentialism stuff. I mean, it's not a, a new concept by any means, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just read what he could put. Oh, yeah. Wow, the Small Wonder reboot is surprisingly dark. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the pigtails? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was good, HPL. Well done. Um... <laughs> Oh, um, it's it's definitely going to be a movie that makes you think. Yeah, I mean, there are some horror elements that they're they're projecting in the trailer itself. They're but... Im- they're implying. Okay. I mean, you you and I both know that, you know, the trailer will tell an entirely different story than the movie. Yeah, because this easily turn around and be like her. Yeah. So. But yeah, I'm I, consider me curious. I mean, we I have am. we have a year to go. This is coming out, uh, or slated to come out April 10th of 2015. So maybe not a full year, but still, consider me uh, curious. Indeed. Oh, well, have you gone to that meet-ava.com yet? I haven't gone there just yet. There's an interesting little flash animation interacts with your mouse thing there. Not much else. <sighs> So it's just almost a placeholder for for future. Content. It's a placeholder for more detail. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh well. Um. Okay. Well, I know before we get to what we're watching, there was one more thing that came out on the internet that I had to share. It's not in the notes. I just wanted to surprise Michael on this one. Oh, you butthead! Most because I <laughs> forgot about it. Um. This was announced a few months back, and we kind of just laughed at the idea. But apparently Lifetime is going through with this. 
they decided to take a semi-popular meme on the internet and let's turn it into a Christmas movie. I give to you, without any further comment, Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever. Oh my god. Oh my freaking god. I wonder if they actually got the original, if that's actually Tartar. It is. If they actually brought Tartar Sauce into the show? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Poor cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I felt I needed to share that with you. That's messed up. <laughs> John, report us to the BBB. <laughs> <laughs> for, for you to report us to the BBB, we have to be a, a business. A B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, I just had to share it. I mean, the fact that the, the movie's already lampooning its own network into it yeah okay fine that was a nice little you know jab a nice little haha in the trailer remember they're gonna try and turn grumpy cat into the new garfield i would not be surprised i could easily lifetime going if we can make this work we can make this into a whole new franchise i mean the damn cat itself ever since the owners put started putting the, you know pictures and videos online and whatnot has raked in millions of dollars in revenue because it's on everything yeah from shirts to hats to coffee mugs to, <coughs> God, er, playing cards. <laughs> okay, they can have this movie only if I can make a Kittler. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We have to make a Kittler movie. <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> okay, you <Yavor! laughs> Can this be can this be included in the in the um, the upcoming sequel to uh, Iron Sky? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are here to take your mice. <laughs> you will give them to me now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's up. here's one question though I have to I have to ask. Now that one meme has been turned not just introduced into a movie but a movie unto itself. Uh huh. What other memes are going to be picked up by other cable? channels to try to turn into i can easily oh, see oh man oh well, let's see there's bad pun husky yeah god <laughs> oh man um, um uh, the bear the, the the obsessive girlfriend one. Oh god i could see that one i mean the pregnancy meme <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> i love how the pregnancy meme has escaped the confines of anime and has reached everywhere else have you noticed they've got a new one now Mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a hand holding a remote control like a clicker mm -hmm. to anything with an anime girl that looks like she may be uh in an uncomfortable yet pleasurable position <laughs> oh <laughs> no been blessing blushing oh no <laughs> oh god mercutio in the chat the dog i mean the do doggy dog <laughs> wow <laughs> wow very movie <laughs> <laughs> very movie such pets <laughs> oh man oh that's horrible it's awesome but horrible it's gonna happen i i swear to you it's gonna we should happen do this. we've got the skills <laughs> we we yes yes we do <laughs> and we know people with shiva so <laughs> that's true we can get uh we can get uh nami and let to let us borrow yuki yeah there we go <laughs> All right, Michael. What have oh, you been watching? Man. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What have you been watching? Um, what have I been watching? Well, not a lot, actually. Uh, this week has been prepping for the for our visitors, so I haven't mm. been doing a lot of watching this week. Um, I'm actually behind on a few things. Um, so uh, yeah, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, me, not so much. I mean, I, like I said, I saw, um, Benedict Cumberbatch and Frankenstein, which mm -hmm. I would tell people to go watch, but it's, you, you can't you watch can't. it anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, oh no, I know what I've been watching. Cause uh, oh, I didn't watch all of it, but I watched a few of them. They were doing the, uh, we talked last week about how they were doing, uh, 13 nights of Elvira on Hulu. Yes. So I got to see all of ginger dead man. How bad. Oh, it's Gary Busey. <laughs> Ginger Dead Man is voiced by Gary Busey. Oh, no. Um, 
and it gets better. They did uh, Evil Bong, Tommy Chong's Evil Bong. Yes, you, you saw that in the trailer. Ginger Dead Man has a cameo in it. Are these all like trauma videos or something like that? Or? I'm thinking it's the same producers because there's apparently a fourth Evil Bong movie. There was yeah, two and three? These, there's four of them. <laughs> uh, the fourth one came out last year, and it's Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong. <laughs> oh, no. There's one point where he's bashing the thing with the hacks, and he sticks his head and he's like, here's Gingy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, yeah. So there was that. There was um, cav- what was it? Cannibal Women in the Avocado Forest. Oblivion. Did you ever get to see Oblivion? I did watch Oblivion. Was that not What horrible? the ever-living fuck was that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, now, here, here's the question, though. Mm-hmm. Now that the, the 13 days is over are these movies still going to be available on hulu a very good question whose answer i don't have okay i'd have to go look because if they are i'm going to tell everyone to go onto hulu and watch oblivion because it's just that bad and that amazing (laughs) yeah it's amazingly horrible (laughs) i mean although um i mean you've got george takei in it you've Mm -hmm. got um julie newmar in it and they are playing up what they're known for good (laughs) There's one part, you know, where Takei's like, "Great Scotties," you know, <laughs> shit like that. Um, let me. I'm, I'm looking real quick for El, the Elvira thing while we're just okay. up on the end of the thing, anyway. But yeah, uh, it was but a, but a, but a Cannibal, a love story. All right then. <laughs> uh, let's see here. <laughs> well, while you're looking that up, um, the only thing I've, Nights of Elvira. The only thing I've been watching really has just been um, Agents of Shield. I'm I'm current on that and it's gotten really good. It's a lot stronger uh from last season. I think mainly for the fact that it is uh, they're no longer focusing solely on world building that they're able to actually They're actually getting into storyline. Exactly. I'm I've I've only seen the first couple episodes of the season, so um I I'm, I'm still behind on that. If you can, you know, I'll get caught up. Get caught up. Get on the Watch ABC app and just catch up. It's so worth it. And they're actually moving forward on a couple storylines simultaneously, which is so nice. Nice. It's like the whole thing was was it, it is no longer just the Sky Show, but at least at this point, all of Sky's you know who is Sky? What is what was her father like? And uh, what was oh, the fact that it's that? Kyle MacLachlan is awesome. Yes, but they move forward. They're moving forward with everything at a fairly quick pace, cool. which is so nice. The obelisk comes back into play. I mean, it, it's really good. So, were you able to find out or? Uh, yes, they're still on. They're still up as of right now. They're still up. Ah, sweet. Oh, okay. yeah, and they had Trancers, which that was just cheese. <sighs> Don't think I've ever seen that one. You've never seen Trancers? No. It's Helen, one of Helen Hunt's first movies. Yeah. I guess I'll be watching Trancers then. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, good, It's good, so good. bad. Good, good. All and right, Puppet well. Master, which is awesome. <laughs> All right, with that, is there really anything else that we can really no. add to this episode? Not really. <laughs> yeah, it's been entertaining to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. As always, stay tuned for post show. Um, and yeah, keep on hanging out. I'm glad you guys keep on watching this yes. episode 105 for crying out loud. <gasps> yeah. Going on for so long, but still. And it'll so go good. so much more. Yes. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for post show. And yeah, for from my mother's basement, I'm Jason. And I am Mike. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.